What's up guys, Caleb Kosterke here, and we are kicking off another Proven Progression episode. Today is day four up here in Revelstoke. I'm going to show you guys some intermediate skill level techniques. I'm gonna talk about some edge control stuff and then how that edge control can lead into learning uphill switchbacks. I'm gonna throw my GoPro on and uh, take you along for the ride as I look for a good practice hill and then walk you through uh, the steps to do an uphill switchback. This is the meadow by the Boulder Cabin. So we're just gonna loop up into the Alpine briefly and then drop down into the trees because I know there's some mellow hills over there that I think would be good for uh, intermediate skills. The train is what I consider really good for intermediate practice, but the light's really flat right now, and it'd be kind of tough to do a good teaching video in this. So we're gonna work around the edge and see if we can get into a little more trees to add some contrast. So that was kind of tricky because he was spinning out on the rock, but he, what he should have done is really commit to manhandling that sled on edge and shoving the front down and at the same time giving it a little gas and I, th I think it would have worked. He kind of just eased into it um, just because he hasn't done that maneuver. So like no shame on him. It's just, uh, you know, a matter of learning and committing to that move. Um, once he's unstuck, I'll have him film it and I'll demonstrate the right way to do it. So I'm in a similar situation that Luke was just in, but uh, not quite as gnarly, so it'll be a little bit easier to show you guys uh, the proper way to do this. What I'm going to do is let the front kind of tip downhill and give it gas and then roll it back up. And just doing that once, my front end went from this angle to this angle. So I'm going to do that again. I'm kind of manhandling and using throttle control to get the front of my sled downhill. And now at this angle, obviously I have a nice line out of here. I will do that once or twice more um, in real time so you can see what it looks like when you put it all together. Also going to burn a bunch of energy unnecessarily because I ride a turbo and I can't help it. Okay, I'm back in this washed out, nose high position, and this is how to get out of it in real time. We're gonna do it again right here. back to looking for a practice hill for doing uphill switchbacks. This hill actually looks really good. I'm gonna give it a shot. Sometimes I have to ride it before I know if it's a good practice hill because it can be hard just looking at it. At least in flat light it's kind of hard. Maybe a little steeper than I'd want for like beginner level guys, but this should be good for intermediate level guys. Okay, so the setup for this maneuver is going to be this mellow hillside like we're talking about. We have a few ruts, but they're not gonna throw us off too much. And what I wanna do is carry 
slow, consistent speed into this and consistent momentum around the corner. I'll do a couple and then walk through it. <laughs> thing to note is that I am wrong foot forward right now. My foot is at the back three quarters of the running board and when I go to do this switch back I, with my outside foot I step in front of my running board foot and then I bring my running board foot over and then I step behind on this side and then back to wrong foot forward. Let's do this again. <laughs> As I already mentioned, I like to have a nice clean in-run um, to come into any maneuver that I'm practicing. When doing an uphill switchback, it's nice to have some of the angle already started. You could come horizontal across the hill, but it's a little bit harder to do it that way. So if you have roughly this amount of angle, you know, whatever that is, 20 degrees or so already started, you kind of have that switchback um, already initiated and it's going to be an easier way to learn it. And we always want to make sledding as easy as possible on ourselves. So this would be my recommendation learning it. Um, as I mentioned, you're coming in wrong foot forward and you're coming in in a controlled um, side hill with a little bit of momentum, but not too much. If you have very much momentum on this maneuver, um, you're going to end up washing the track out as you come into it. And if you don't have enough momentum, you're going to end up starting to turn uphill and just burying the sled. To initiate the turn to go uphill, you're going to want to pull the sled over into the hillside a little bit more. And you can counter steer just a tiny bit to help do that. And what you're doing is you're basically carving this corner around. So once you initiate it, you want to stop that rotation that you started. And so you, you lay the sled over a little bit, it kind of washes a little, it chews into this corner a little, and then right after that, you want to turn the skis into the hillside a little bit to kind of level the sled back out. Because if you lay the sled over and your weight stays on that side and you don't do anything about it, the sled's just gonna flop over on its side. You'll wash out and just get stuck um, kind of planted here. Once that direction change is initiated, we have to stop the direction change. And we almost wanna think about chewing straight up the hill for a little bit um, and then going to the other side. So we're not trying to do everything all at once. During a hop over, you kind of have to do everything at once um, to make the switch back tight. But we're doing this on a shallow enough of a slope that you should be able to chew straight up the hill briefly. And that's kind of what I did right here around the corner. Once you're getting close to this position where you're pointed straight up hill, you'll start thinking about your footwork and you can step onto the running board. So go from wrong foot forward to um, both feet on one side and then step over to the other side. So you're riding in a neutral stance briefly. The timing of that isn't very important. What's more important is where your upper body is and where your balance point is on the sled. As long as you're leaning over the seat, um, your sled's not gonna roll back down the hill. So you control what the sled's doing with where your upper body is more so than where your feet are. So it's a little bit flexible when you step over. You wanna just do it whenever it is uh, most natural. And that's going to come with experience. As you're progressing around the switchback, you're gonna end up with both skis in the snowpack. A lot of guys will end up panicking at this point. There's no reason to panic. Just keep your momentum going forward and keep those handlebars turned in a counter steered position and keep going until it tips back over. The slide can sit like that as you chew, chew, chew. And then right about here, you could see my slide getting back on edge. And that's because I stayed counter steered and gave it just a little bit of throttle and it came right back over. Once you have the sled back up on edge and you're in a wrong foot forward position, you've completed your switch back and you've regained your control. And now you're scouting for the rest of your line. Now I'm going to walk through common mistakes that I see during my clinics. I did that good, I failed really good. 
This is probably the most common mistake I see for doing uphill switchbacks and for doing hopovers. So what's happening here is you're initiating your corner really good, but then you're getting stuck on the downhill side and never transferring over, never getting your body weight back over the sled. Once you get stuck on that downhill side, there's no recovering. Your, your line is shot at that point and you're just gonna have to get unstuck and try it again. To avoid this, what we have to do is shift our weight into a more neutral position earlier. So like I said, you know, the corner was initiated well, but as soon as that corner is initiated, you have to get neutral with your weight. That doesn't necessarily mean your feet have to be neutral, but my body positioning has to be over the seat uh, or this will happen every single time. If this happens to you more than a few times, what I want you to do is find a lower angle slope because um, that's going to make it a little bit easier to commit to going straight up for farther distance. And just think about it that way. Like the more you're struggling, the more you should have a lower angle slope. If this right away feels too easy, just take it to a steeper slope. And since we're here, I'll touch on getting unstuck in a situation like this. Rolling it over is always going to be the easiest. I'm going to grab my running board um, to roll this over. You can grab the ski. You generally get a little bit more leverage grabbing the ski. But since I'm right here, I'm grabbing running board, pushing down on the bars and causing it to pivot. And as soon as I feel this weight starting to fall on the downhill side, I'm going to brace up against the track and the ski and take it nice and slow. If you're on steep enough of a slope that the sled could continue to roll, you don't wanna be under it like I just demonstrated. You wanna be grabbing um, from the ski loop. That way if the sled does go down the hill, it's not going over the top of you because that's never fun. So I'm grabbing the uphill ski loop, rolling. And then as it's getting to this tipping point, I'm gonna get on the uphill side and anchor. I'm kinda, you don't need to be sitting in the snow, but you wanna make sure your feet are anchored in good. Both hands on the ski loop. And let it roll over like that. Steeper the hill, the harder it is to get it to stop, but you'd be surprised what you can get a sled to stop on when you have the right technique. Anytime you roll a sled over, your handlebars get kind of full of snow. You want to make sure you de-ice your handlebars and hit your throttle lever a couple times like this to clear out any snow because uh, there is a chance of the throttle sticking when you roll it um, from snow getting jammed in there. This is the second most common mistake I see. And what happened here is that I got the sled pointed uphill properly, but then I never transitioned over to my other edge. On a lower slope angle, this would be okay and I could keep going uphill, but on this angle of slope and this snow, I have to get over on that edge a lot faster and I have to carry more momentum um, around this corner. So all I really would have had to do here is get on the throttle a little bit more, carry a little more momentum and start shifting my weight sooner. One of the big things that helps you get your weight shifted from that side of the sled to this side of the sled is how much you turn your skis into the hillside. As mentioned before, you want to turn your skis into the hillside right after initiating that carve into the corner. And when you do that, it's taking your weight from this side of the sled to this side. Since I'm stuck again, I will walk through how I would get my sled out of this situation. Since getting stuck is always a part of snowmobiling, learning how to efficiently get unstuck is uh, super important. And what I'm going to do for this one is start my sled, run the track and yank it downhill and let this track chew itself out of the snowpack. If I just pull on it right now, the track's so wedged in, there's no way I could get it over. But starting it, the track will cut itself free. <laughs> And then once I get it to here, I should be able to roll it. I got the sled rolled over, but it's still in a pretty bad position. And I'm having a hard time lifting it up because of the snow right there. So what I'm going to do is grab the ski loop and try to drag this front end down 
there's two options. You can grab the front of the sled and try to shimmy it, or you can grab the back of the sled and lift it up and throw it downhill. So it didn't move that much. So now I'm going to switch game plans, come to the back. There we go. The stronger you are, the easier it is to get unstuck. But honestly, technique is huge and proper technique makes you look like you're really strong. You know, I tried the front and it wasn't moving that easy. So then I right away came to the back instead of fighting it and used um, the fact that the track wasn't in the snowpack and wasn't held down to my advantage. When the track's not in the snow, it's not very heavy. So I'm already in a pretty good position and I could get going from here, but just to make it easier, I'm gonna throw this downhill once more, twice more. As soon as my throttle is free and I can reach my pull cord, I'm going to start the sled. With the sled started, I can spin the track a little bit and the track just cuts itself a little trench there and a little ledge. That way I'm not fighting it to lift it up. And then I'm good to go. That wraps up the uphill switchback portion of this video. For the rest of this video, we're just gonna go ride trees and I'm going to teach along the way anything that comes up. Let's uh, kind of skirt around the side here. It's supposed to be intermediate level riding stuff and to double as using the day as a rest day. But I found this ravine that's just too good not to dip into. So we're gonna pull a couple lines in here. Luke's up there set up to film and I'm gonna try to pull a line all the way up this. I'm a little worried about this creek. I have to carry so much momentum. We'll see how it goes. back to some intermediate level riding stuff. I'm gonna talk about riding through pillows. There's a, a pretty sweet pillow field right here. Um, the upper part, the big pillows that you see, those would be advanced. Well, I'd consider that advanced. Lower ones would be more intermediate. Um, so I'm gonna go through some tips for how to ride through pillows. <laughs> First thing here is how I stopped on the pillow. If you notice, I used this bench that is this natural bench here to park my sled on it. And it gives me a nice platform to now survey my line through this pillow field. I see a few lines. There's a pretty advanced level line up higher on the left, bounce it through those. And then I see an intermediate line down lower. And what I'm going to do is hug the tops of these pillows once again, going across this. You can see it kind of dropped out under my track right there. That's because 
there's these air pockets around the rocks. So you want to make sure you carry some momentum through that spot where it could potentially drop and then you can stop on top of the pillow. The tops of pillows are always nice and hard, kind of icy. So that's a good safe spot to stop and pick your next line. The first choice for my next line is going to be straightforward. If I start trenching out, then I'm gonna turn down and go through those trees. As I start to move forward and get forward momentum, I'm going to rock the sled downhill a little bit and give it throttle. You don't want the sled pulled into the hill while throttling because um, the track's just going to trench down. When the angle of the track is rolled into the hill, it's kicking downhill. You want the angle of the track to kind of level out, plane out a little bit as you're getting into the throttle. Nice and smooth, right through the tops of the pillows. There's another group in here that dropped in from the top and couldn't figure out how to get back to the cabin. So, taking them to the cabin and then maybe we'll do a little more riding. Definitely should have some GPS with you or just be more reserved if you don't know the area and don't have the skill to get yourself out of holes. You can see I'm using that same technique to follow this old track. And then here's the technique on a pillow. 